Because of Winn-Dixie, Chapter 10, read for you by Mrs. Finch. I told Gloria Dump everything. I told her how me and the preacher had just moved to Naomi and how I had to leave all my friends behind. I told her about my mama leaving and I listened and I listed out the 10 things that I knew about her. And I explained that here in Naomi, I missed mama more than I have ever had in Watley. I told her about the preacher being like a turtle hiding all the time inside his shell. I told her about finding Winn-Dixie in the produce department and how, because of him, I became friends with Miss Franny Block and got a job working for a man named Otis at Gertrude's Pets and got invited to Sweetie Pie Thomas's birthday party. I even told Gloria Dump how Dunlap and Stevie Dewberry called her, to, called her a witch but I told her they were stupid, mean, bald-headed boys, and I didn't believe them, not for long anyhow. And the whole time I was talking, Gloria Dump was listening. She was nodding her head and smiling and frowning and saying, hmm, and is this right? I could feel her listening with, with all her heart, and it felt good. You know what, she said when I was all done, what? could be that you got more of your mama in you than just red hair and freckles and running fast. Really? I said. Like what? Like maybe you got her green thumb. The two of us could plant something and see how it grows. Test your thumb out. Okay, I said. What Gloria Dump picked for me to grow was a tree, or she said it was a tree. To me, it looked more like a plant. She had me dig a hole for it and put it in the ground and pat the dirt around it tight like it was a baby and I was tucking it into bed. What's, what kind of tree is it? I asked Gloria Dump. It's a wait and see tree, she said. What's that mean? It means you got to wait for it to grow up before you know what it is. Can I come back to see it tomorrow? I asked. Child, she said, as long as this is my garden, you're welcome in it but that tree ain't going to have changed much by tomorrow. But I want to see you too, I said. Humph, said Gloria Dump. I ain't going nowhere. I be right here. I woke Win dixie up then. He had peanut butter in his whiskers, and he kept yawning and stretching. He licked Gloria Dump's hand before we left, and I thanked her. That night, when the preacher was tucking me into bed, I told him how I got a job at Gertrude's Gertrude's pets, and I told him all about making friends with Miss Franny Block and getting invited to Sweetie Pie's party, and I told him about meeting Gloria Dump. When Dixie lay on the floor, waiting for the preacher to leave so he could hop up on the bed like he always did. When I was talking, the preacher kissed me goodnight, and then he leaned way over and gave Win Dixie a kiss too, right on the top of his head. You can go ahead and get up there now, he said to Win dixie Win dixie looked at the preacher. He didn't smile at him, but he opened his mouth wide like he was laughing, like the preacher had just told him the funniest joke in the world, and this is what amazed me the most. The preacher laughed back. Win dixie hopped up on the bed, and the preacher got up and turned on the light. I leaned over and kissed Win dixie too, right on the nose, but he didn't notice. He was already asleep and snoring.